Hello again, this is the final video for Appendix A and in this video we'll be talking about hypothesis testing. So this slide introduces some terminology, um, tells us that there are three different types of tests. We'll get into all of these, some of these concepts a bit later. For now I just want to highlight the bottom concept which is relates to errors, type 1 error and type 2 error. So a type 1 error is when we reject a null hypothesis, and it's important to, to state null hypothesis here, not just the hypothesis. It's when we reject a true null hypothesis. A type 2 error, on the other hand, is when we falsely accept a null hypothesis. In other words, when we do not reject a null hypothesis that is in fact false. Now it turns out that the significance level that we choose is directly related to rejecting a true null hypothesis. In fact, it is the probability of rejecting a true null hypothesis. So, of course, by reducing the alpha value, we reduce the probability of rejecting a true null hypothesis. But this does not come cost-free. In fact, there's a trade-off between these two types of errors. So whenever we reduce the probability of rejecting a type 1 error, we necessarily increase the probability of committing a type 2 error. And later on in one of the hypothesis testing examples, um, I think in chapter 5, um, I'll go into an example of thinking about this trade-off between type 1 and type 2 error. Alright, most important at this stage is these five steps in doing hypothesis testing. So this is just a basic sort of algorithm you can just follow, just implement these steps and, and you can answer any question related to hypothesis testing, any application question related to hypothesis testing using these five steps. Okay, so step one, we just state the null and alternative hypotheses. Step two involves computing the test statistic. And the test st statistic used in this computation will depend on the probability distribution followed by a given test statistic, which in turn depends on the parameter we are trying to estimate. And by now it should be sort of clear that if we are estimating uh, mean and we want to test hypotheses related to mu, we'd be using the t distribution. Whereas if we are estimating a sample variance and we want to make hypotheses or want to test hypotheses related to the population variance, we'd be using the chi-square distribution. The next step is, step three that is, is to determine the critical values. And these critical values will define a rejection region. Um, it's best to describe this with a graph, which I'll do uh, once we, when we look at one of the examples. It's important to note the critical value depends on the significance level that we choose. And these values are simply read directly from the probability distribution tables. Then in step four, we compare the test statistic and critical value. And finally in step five, we use the outcome of that comparison to determine whether or not we should reject the null hypothesis. Um, and just to note, that when we compare the test statistic and the critical value, when the test statistic is larger than the critical value in a right-tailed test, then we will reject the null hypothesis. Um, in the case of a left-tailed test, when the test statistic is smaller than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. But in any of the three types of tests, the most important thing to note is if the test statistic lies within the rejection region, which is itself determined by the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. So this is a very useful table. Um, it tells you in which cases you use a right tail, left tail, or two tail test. Most important thing to note is this third column, the alternative hypotheses. So if you look at null, the null hypothesis, the second column of this table, you notice that in any case, regardless of whether it's a right tail, left tail, or two tail test, the null hypothesis always has an equal sign. So here, mu x is just referring to the uh, population mean value, 
half the random variable x and mu o in this instance um, denotes some specific number. So in the null hypothesis you're always hypothesizing that the mean value of the random variable x takes on some specific value and we just uh, denote that with mu o. Then in the alternative hypothesis you get different symbols between um, mu x and mu o. So in, in the right tail test um, you always have a greater than sign between mu x and mu o. In the left tail test you always have a left uh, a less than sign between mu x and mu o. And in a two tail test you have a not equal to sign between mu x and mu o. So if you are asked to test the hypothesis that mu equals some number against the hypothesis that mu does not equal that number, you know you're dealing with a two-tail test and you have this as your alternative hypothesis. Whereas if you are asked a question like test whether mu equals some value against the hypothesis that mu is less than that value, you know you're dealing with the left tail test and so on. Okay, so then the final column in this table just tells you the test statistic that you use um, and how to evaluate, how to determine the critical regions of a distribution. So for a right tail test, the test statistic that you compute, um, if it is larger than the critical value that you look up, then you know that uh, it is in the rejection, it lies within the rejection region and you can reject the null hypothesis. So as the heading of the of this column says, critical region reject HO if. So you reject the null hypothesis if in a right tail test, the test statistic is larger than the critical value. Um, or in a left tail test, you reject HO if the test statistic is less than the critical value. And in a two tail test, you reject HO if the absolute value of the test statistic is larger than this should be the absolute value of the uh, critical value where in this case you have alpha over 2. Um, so one important difference between critical values in one tail test versus two tail tests is that in the latter case, in a two tail case, the probability is split between the two tails. So that's an important distinction to note as well. And if you're wondering where you're going to get this negative critical value from the, from the probability distribution table, you don't see any negative values. Remember that the T distribution table gives you values for the right side of the distribution and the values on the left side are essentially the same, except you can just put the negative sign in front of them. So let's look at some examples to make this more concrete. So you're given a sample mean of 20, standard deviation 3, a sample size of 25, and a significance level of 0.05. And you're asked to test the following hypotheses. Um, so let's look at the first one. HO equals, uh, HO, the null hypothesis, is stated as mu equals 15. And H1 is stated, the alternative hypothesis is stated as mu is larger than 15. So you know you're dealing with a right tail test over here. Okay, so step one, write down our null hypothesis, hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Step two, calculate the critical value. So you have, sorry, the test statistic. So you have these numbers given to you. All you need to do is plug them in. And again, remember that the hypothesized value for mu takes on the number here in the in the numerator of the test statistic takes on the mu value over there so once we do that calculation we end up with a number of 8.33 then we need to look up the critical value in the t distribution table and to do that we have to consult this just to remind you of the note at the bottom of the t-distribution table, the smaller probability shown in the head of each column is the area in one tail. The larger prob probability is the area in both tails. So we're interested in the case where 
the probability is in one tail because we're dealing with a right tail test here. Now, our degrees of freedom were given at, as uh, 24 because our sample size was 25, and 25 minus 1 is 24. And now we need to look for the appropriate column. Um, the significance level is 0 0.05, the alpha value that is. And so we're interested in this column over here because remember, we're dealing with a one tail test here. And taking our note into consideration, we are interested in the number given in this column. And that row uh, turns out to be 1.711. So going back to our slide, we notice that that is indeed the critical value. And if we go back to our, so now we have to compare these two, right? We've got a, a, a test statistic that we've calculated. We looked up the critical value. Now let's go to our table quickly and see what we should do in this case. We know we're dealing with a right tail test because the alternative hypothesis, hypothesis is as a greater than sign. Um, and here it tells us reject HO if the test statistic is larger than the critical value. And that is indeed the case here. 8.3 is larger than 1.7. So therefore, step four, we make that comparison. We state that the test statistic, the computed T stat is larger than the critical value. And therefore, we reject the null. Okay, so this becomes a little bit more clear when you look at it graphically. So this is graphical illustration of the hypothesis test. Um, now, our critical value is given over here at 1.711, lies to the right of zero, of course. And our test statistic, we cannot even see on this graph. It lies way to the right of that. So this test statistic is well within the rejection region. Okay, now notice that anything to the right of that critical value 1.711, the gray area on this graph is considered the rejection region of this distribution. Anything to the left of that is considered the acceptance region. So if we calculated a test statistic that was smaller than 1.711, that landed up somewhere in the white part of this distribution rather than the gray part, we would not have rejected the null. But what we see in this graph is that in order to not reject the null, we would have to choose an alpha value that is vanishingly small. So we can be fairly confident that the true value of mu is larger than 15. Now, just to give you a little bit more context here, note that this zero over here is associated with the hypothesized mu. So if you, if you recall, when we moved from the normal distribution to the standard normal distribution, we standardized the variable and the mean was always zero. So this number here, the, uh, the number that we are, are hypothesizing for mu, 15, is associated with the mean of the distribution here, zero. And what we are saying is that if there is a five greater than 5% chance that when we draw a sample from this population, and or rather let me rephrase that. What we are saying is that if the true value of the mean for this random variable is 15, then there would be only a 5% chance that if we should sample from that population and estimate a mean, a sample mean, there's only a 5% chance that that value will lie this far from zero, will lie, be, will lie at or beyond 1.711. So if our mean estimate lies even further than that, we are happy to accept that the true value cannot be 15 because it is extremely unlikely that we will draw a sample from a population that has a true population mean of 15 and estimate a mean value of 20. Okay, moving on to a left tail test. We follow the exact same process and you will notice that the numbers 
are all the same as well. One key difference is that in the alternative hypothesis, we now have a less than sign and we have a negative test statistic because the hypothesized value for mu is now 25 rather than 15, so it's larger than 20, therefore we end up with a negative value here. And when we look up the t value, which we will do in the exact same way as we did in the previous example, we just put a negative sign in front because this is a left tail test. In this case, the test statistic is less than the critical value. And once again, we go back to our table. In the case of a left tail test, when the test statistic is less than the critical value, we reject the null. So once again, over here, we reject the null. Um, and in this case, our acceptance, uh, well, our rejection region lies in the left tail rather than the right tail. Now looking at a two-tail test, here we have the null hypothesis mu equals 30. The alternative hypothesis is that mu is not equal to 30. Now we don't even have to think about whether this is going to be accepted or rejected. We've already rejected the hypothesis that that mu is equal to 25 in favor of the hypothesis that mu is less than 25. Um, so just going on that, we already know that we're going to um, we're going to reject this null. But just to go through the process, um, again we substitute the values into the test statistic of, uh, um, expression to arrive at this number over here, which gives us minus 16. Um, then we have to look up the t value. Now here we have a two-tail test rather than a one-tail test and that is why the significance level is divided by two over here. So here you have um, alpha equals 0 0.025 and degrees of freedom 24. And now you've got a critical value in both sides of the distribution, both in the left as well as the right. And it seems that this number at the bottom is incorrect, it should be 2.064 and we can in fact, in fact double check that by just looking at the distribution table. So remember that we've got 24 degrees of freedom, so we're looking at this very bottom row over here, and we have a um, 0 0.05 significance level. So the number we are interested in is this one over here, 2.064. So indeed, this is correct. These numbers are incorrect. They should be 2.064. And as expected, we will reject the null because the test statistic lies way in the left tail over here. It is extremely, extremely unlikely to sample 25 observations from a distribution which has a true population mean of 30. Therefore, we reject the hypothesis that the true population mean value is 30. Okay. Next, we move on to hypothesis testing for the variance of a, a given um, population, a given random variable. Now, the process of doing hypothesis testing on, for the variance is identical to what it was for the, for the mean. The only difference is that we use a different test statistic given by this expression over here. Um, and we have to find our critical value in a different probability distribution table, namely the chi-square distribution table. So the alternative hypothesis relate to right, left, and two-tail tests in the same way that it did for for uh, hypothesis testing on the mu on the mean. And this is the the last column is really the main the main difference, and of course the notation. Okay, so one important thing to note here as well, um, again, we reject HO if the test statistic is larger than the critical value that we look up in the chi-square table. Um, we reject the left tail, um, we reject the null hypothesis in a left tail test when the critical value is less than, sorry, when the test statistic, computed test statistic is less than the critical value that we look up in the chi-square table and we reject the null hypothesis in a two-tail test if the test statistic 
is either larger than the right side of the distribution or smaller than the left side of the distribution. Now this is important to note over here. When you look up the critical values in the chi-square distribution table, um, on the right side you will look at the value under the column given by alpha. In the left side it will be 1 minus alpha. And in the two-toe test, you look up both of these, of course, but then you divide alpha by two. Now, the chi-square distribution is different from the T distribution in that it is not symmetric and it only has positive values. So over here, unlike in the T distribution where you looked up a single value, whether it was left tail or right tail, over here, the numbers are going to differ between the left and right side of the distribution. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here we're given a sample variance of 12, a sample size of 31, and the significance level 0 0.05, and we are asked to test those hypotheses. So I'm going to look at the two-tail test only, um, uh, or maybe one, maybe one of the of the others, one of the one-tail tests as well. Okay, looking at the two-tail test. We have the null hypothesis that the variance is equal to 7.5. Remember, we estimated a sample variance of 12. And we are, are stating the null hypothesis as, well, the true variance is actually 7.5 against the alternative hypothesis that it is not 7.5. So we know we're dealing with a two-tail test here. So plugging numbers into the test statistic expression, we arrive at a value of 48. Um, next is uh, looking up the critical values for this test and now we have to consult the uh, chi-square distribution table which is given over here so our, remember our critical value was 0 0.05 and because we're doing a two-tail test we need to divide that by two so in the left side we have a critical value of 0 0.025 and on the right side a critical value of 0 0.025 our sample size was 31, therefore our degrees of freedom is 30. So we're looking for a number in this row and we're looking for a number in this column because 1 minus 0 0.025 is equal to 0 0.975. So the number in the left side of the distribution is 16.7908. Which is given over there. And now we find the number on the right side of the distribution. We have to scroll down a bit. Remembering that uh, alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. So we're looking at this column. And the significance level was uh, 30. And that is associated with this row over here. So the critical value on the right side of the distribution is 46.9792 and that gives us rejection regions below 16.7908 and above 46.972 and acceptance regions lie between these two values. The, the acceptance region lies between these two values. So next step we compare the test statistic against the critical values and 48 is larger than 46.9792, which lies on the right tail. Therefore, we can once again reject the null and state that we cannot conclude that the true value of sigma squared is 7.5. Okay, let's look at a one of the one-tailed test examples. So here we have the uh, stated hypothesis that sigma squared is 20. Again, and we're testing that against the alternative hypothesis, the hypothesis that sigma squared is less than 20. So here you know you're dealing with a one-tail test. So computing the test statistic, plugging numbers into the test statistic expression, we end up with a value of 18. Um, now we need to look up the critical value. So if we go back to our, to our very helpful table over here, we know that when we're dealing with a left-tail test, we need to take look up the value as follows. We take 1 minus alpha and use the degrees of freedom in the table to look up that number. 
So let's go to our table quickly. So recall that we had degrees of freedom 30 and alpha was 0 0.05. So one minus alpha would be 0 0.95. So we're looking at this column over here. So the value is 18.4926. That is our critical value. And this is a left tail test. So if the test statistic is smaller than the critical value, it lies within the rejection region. And in this case, it's marginally smaller. So the null is once again rejected and we do not conclude that the variance, we cannot conclude. We do not have sufficient evidence to conclude that the variance, in this case, or the true population variance is equal to 20. And that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, I won't be testing you on the F distribution, um, so we can leave it at that.